Hello and welcome back to EAC, and today I'm going to be reviewing Dr. Sleep, which came out in this year, 2019, directed by Mike Flanagan, starring Ewan McGregor as an older Danny Torrance, who was, of course, the young boy seen in The Shining. I made a review on that movie on Halloween with some of my friends, so you can check out that review on The Shining if you want after this video. But he is playing an older Danny Torrance and has to help a young girl who also has the Shining power, as he does. He has to help her to stop Rebecca Ferguson's character, called Rose the Hat, and her gang or associates or whatever, uh, they have to stop her from trying to capture the people who have the same shining uh, ability that Danny and the young girl in the movie has. And I was really excited for this movie. I love The Shining. If you guys have seen my review on The Shining, which I mentioned a minute ago, you would know that I love the movie. I gave it a 10 out of 10, my highest grade. And I think it's basically flawless. So obviously I was excited for this movie. And it was really good. Obviously not as good as The Shining, but it was a good movie. And there are some flaws with it that I will get into later. And this video is spoiler free. I'm not going to get into any spoilers in this review uh, because Dr. Sleep is a new release. So I'm not going to talk about any of the specific scenes that might spoil it for anyone who has not seen the movie. I'm just going to be talking about the movie as a whole spoiler free. So you don't have to worry about that. But I really liked Dr. Sleep. I'm going to talk about the positive things, aka most of the movie. Movie. And then at the end of this video, I will get into the negative points again without spoiling anything. So starting off, well, let's first mention I saw the two trailers for this movie. The first trailer, the teaser trailer, I think it might have been, or the official trailer, whatever. And then the final trailer, which was, of course, the most recent one. So I saw the final trailer and I actually didn't really like it that much. I just thought, I thought it looked kind of silly because there's one part with Ewan McGregor um, in the Shining Hotel, the Overlook Hotel, um, with like people, like ghosts' hands all over his face. And it just like pauses on his face for an absurd long time and it just looks silly. Same with the young girl in the movie who I forget the actress's name of, like what is her actual name. And that's going to bother me because she was really good in the movie. Um, I'll get more into her character later in the video. But yeah, the final trailer, um, there's one scene with her as well. She's like looking like this and she's shaking her head like this and it just looks silly. And some things that they showed in the trailer as well just looked a bit dumb to be adapted into a movie seriously, like without being silly or anything. It Chapter 2 kind of showed a little bit of that, it being a bit silly, a Stephen King adaptation being kind of dumb. And that review will be coming out soon. I made it like a month ago when I saw the movie, but I honestly kind of forgot about it. I've also been very busy with the Shine review that I made on Halloween, The Lighthouse, and obviously this review. But that will be coming out very soon, so stay tuned for that. But in that movie, it was kind of silly. And in the trailer for Dr. Sleep, I kind of saw a bit of that. So I got a bit nervous. I was like, uh, how is Mike Flanagan going to adapt this into something serious? Because this movie is more on the serious side, like The Shining. And he did it tremendously. Mike Flanagan is an amazing director and there's no one else I would want behind the camera for this movie except for maybe Stanley Kubrick if he was still alive, rest in peace. But Mike Flanagan helms this movie very well and he has proved himself to be a great director with this movie and a bunch of other horror movies that he's made in the past. And that is definitely probably one of the best things about this movie, just how it all plays out and how it's such a great adaptation of the Dr. Sleep book, which I have not read. Uh, I haven't read The Shining either, but um, I can't really speak for it being a great adaptation when I haven't read the book, but I can imagine it being, you know, filled with a bunch of stuff like The Shining and it's kind of hard to fit into a movie scene with it being a bit silly because Stephen King like adds in some stuff that might not adapt that well into the big screen but Mike Flanagan does it amazingly and he does an overall great job directing this movie even though I was a bit scared by the final trailer it being maybe a bit too silly a bit too dumb but it was great how he mixed everything together perfectly to result in a serious movie about Danny Torrance and this young girl and Rose the Hat played by Rebecca Ferguson as I said uh, everyone in the movie is great. Ewan McGregor is awesome in this movie. Like, he's great as Danny Torrance. The young girl in the movie, who, as I said, I forgot her name, the actual actress's name. Um, yeah, she is great in this movie as well. And Rebecca Ferguson, she, I think, gives the best performance in the whole movie, past Ewan McGregor as well, who I really like Ewan McGregor in, like, other movies. Like, I think he's great in everything else that he does. But Rebecca Ferguson, she did great in this movie, haunting as the villain character 
just, I can't really get into it that much without spoiling a lot of stuff. But she's just sinister in this movie, and it's great. It shows how, you know, she was just the perfect casting choice for this. Just everyone in this movie was great performance-wise. And moving on from that, this movie is very scary. It pays homage to The Shining in ways that you might not expect, more subtle ways. Obviously, in the trailer, you had some shots of the Overlook Hotel. Like, oh, they go back there, and it's like The Shining, yay! But in this movie... The transitions in The Shining, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, if you've seen The Shining, but in that movie, there are a lot of fade transitions, like it dissolves into another shot, and Mike Flanagan uses that a lot in this movie, and it's just, it feels like the sequel to The Shining without even knowing that it is the sequel to The Shining, like obviously we knew that, but just seeing it, it kind of feels like The Shining, and that's great, and also a lot of the sounds from The Shining uh, were used in this movie. And by that, I mean, like, the music. He used that for a lot of his scares. And my friend, who I went to see the movie with, he said it was the scariest movie he has ever seen. Uh, it's definitely not the scariest movie I've ever seen. But that just goes to show how scary this movie actually is. Because, um, he doesn't see a lot of horror movies either. So he can't really say that knowing a lot of other experiences like I can. But yeah, this movie is actually really scary. As I said, using a lot of the same stuff from The Shining that Stanley Kubrick did in 1980. So Mike Flanagan does a great job with that as well. But going past all of the positive stuff um, and all of the great things about this movie, mostly how Mike Flanagan overall just directed this movie so well, I'm going to get into some of the flaws with this movie. First, I'm going to start off with the young girl character in this movie. As I said, she gave a good performance, but... At some point, she almost seems, like, cocky, like, kind of braggy when she, um, defeats a certain foe or whatever. Not saying that she does because of spoilers, but I think you could kind of infer that she defeats some people at some point, aka okay, she kills them. So, as I said, she is a bit braggy at some point when she defeats someone or does something right or something good or whatever. Um, she does get a bit cocky and kind of, there's one scene, this isn't really a spoiler, she does something good and then she goes, I hope that hurt. And then, like, a, something happens and then she goes, a lot. And it's just like, uh, also another problem, um, that I'll get into later after I finish this, is the writing in this movie. There are some lines, particularly with the young girl character, um, that just, I don't know, just didn't work for me. I think this movie is overall really well written, like the screenplay and the dialogue in this movie. But there are some points, as I said, especially with the young girl character, that, I don't know, just didn't work for me at all times. Um, and back to the young girl character being braggy and stuff, it actually made her a bit unlikable, like her character. And that was a major downgrade because she is kind of the main character of this movie after Ewan McGregor. Like, it's obviously Danny Torrance in this movie, and she almost has the same part as him, being the main protagonist. But they honestly almost share the same amount of screen time. I think Ewan McGregor has a bit more. But with her being the other main protagonist of this movie, it was kind of a downgrade seeing her being a bit annoying. Not her character was annoying, but just how many times she did that. It made her a little bit unlikable, and that was kind of something that diminished the score of this grade a bit because she is one of the main characters of this movie. But anyways, moving past that to another flaw, uh, the third act of this movie, without spoiling anything, it is mostly just for the fans because they go to the Overlook Hotel and that's in the trailer, that's not a spoiler, like it's obvious that they go back to the Overlook Hotel and there are so many references to The Shining that it's almost too much. I mean, it's cool to see Oh, look, there's whoever, like, they're in the gold ballroom, which Dane Torrance goes into at one point in the movie. It's like, oh, I remember those scenes from The Shining when Jack Torrance was in the gold ballroom. And there's an interaction which was really good, but there was something that diminished it a little bit, and I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, just, I hate to say this because another reviewer, in fact, multiple other reviewers have said this, uh, and I hate to kind of copy them, even though I feel this way as well. Uh, it's mostly just for the fans to show them, oh, look, they're back at the Overlook, yay! And there are plenty of references, like in The Shining, when that one guy has the giant gash in his head, and, and he's holding, like, a champagne glass or whatever, and he's like, great party, isn't it? Or something like that. There is a scene just like that in this movie, the same character, he says the same exact thing, but they recreate it, with obviously a different actor, 
and it's just not the same as it was in The Shining, and that is another point that I would like to get to, as I said, with the gold ballroom scene. In this movie, as I said, there's one thing that kind of diminished it, and it was the recreations of certain characters. They recreated, I don't think this is a spoiler, if it is, I'm sorry, it's not a big one, like it's not going to spoil the whole movie, but they recreate Jack Nicholson in this movie. Like, they have another person playing Jack Torrance. And that just, it didn't sit well with me. It really didn't. I was fine with them recreating young Danny Torrance because he was in the trailer, like, riding around on his tricycle. They recreated some of the scenes from The Shining and also added some scenes from that time period into this movie, like, with young Danny instead of Ewan McGregor, as well as a different actress playing Danny's mom, Wendy Torrance, uh, instead of Shelley Duvall, obviously. And I was fine with those because they seemed like they had to be in the movie to kind of carry along some of the plot points that would come up later in the movie. Those I was pretty much fine with, but when they recreated Jack Nicholson, Jack Torrance, I was like, they shouldn't have done that because it was just not the same. I get that Mike Flanagan wanted it to be in the movie. He wouldn't have done it if he didn't need it to be in the movie, so it was kind of a big part in the film. But I just didn't like seeing someone else playing Jack Torrance, especially with an actor like Jack Nicholson, someone kind of um, playing his part and replacing him almost because obviously Jack Nicholson can do this because he's much older than he was in 1980 when he played Jack Torrance in The Shining. But also, as I said, with the guy going, great potty, isn't it? Uh, they recreated that. It just wasn't the same. Also, with the two twins that were in the trailer, at the end of the final trailer, actually, uh, they go up to Ewan McGregor's character and say the same exact line, same exact way, because they took the audio from The Shining and placed it in the trailer. But in this movie, they have two different girls playing them, obviously. And I keep on saying obviously because it's obvious, but okay, I'll stop. But they look different, they sound different, because they don't take the audio from The Shining and place it in the movie like they did in the trailer for Doctor Sleep. They actually have these two new actresses, these two new young girl twins, who say the same line, like, hello, Danny, or something. Um, they say that, and it's just not the same. And I didn't like that that much because it was just weird seeing... Uh, someone else play these classic characters and these classic figures in pop culture. It was just weird to see them played by someone else. Even though it was kind of like the twins in the movie, they played a big part, but they weren't in the movie that much. Like they had those couple lines when they see Danny down the hall in The Shining. But in this movie, uh, they say the same line, but it's just not the same. And it kind of doesn't sit that well with me. So that was definitely a diminishing factor, especially Jack Nicholson. I mean, I really didn't want them to recreate that in this movie, to recreate his character. Because he was just so perfect as Jack Torrance. And seeing someone else playing him was just weird. That's just me, though. You might be fine with it. But that does lower the grade for me, at least. But overall, Doctor Sleep was an amazing movie. I really liked it, guys. Like, I really liked it. It's definitely up there for one of my favorite films of the year. And yes, that includes Joker, which I gave a 10 out of 10. And The Lighthouse, which I gave a 9.5 out of 10. That includes those movies. But this movie is really good, guys. I recommend that you go see it. And yeah, it was just an amazing theater experience with some of my friends. Uh, as I said, my friend thought it was the scariest movie he has ever seen. I don't know about that but it is definitely up there for one of my favorite movies of the year. And for that reason, I'm going to give Dr. Sleep an 8.5 out of 10. Guys, I was really happy with Dr. Sleep. I recommend that you go see it. I know I've said that a ton of times, but I actually do. You should definitely go see Dr. Sleep. It is an amazing experience, and I can't say it enough to try to get you guys to go see this movie. But anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching this movie review. I do have a small announcement, or actually, it's a pretty big announcement. I have a second channel called EAC Films. You could check it out if you go to the channel section on my channel, on this channel, Everyone's a Crick. Um, and you could click on that, or if you're on a computer or a laptop or whatever, you could click on my channel, and on the right-hand side, there's a bar that says, like, Feature Channels, but it says My Second Channel. And right there is EAC Films. is basically a channel for anything else that I feel like wouldn't fit on this channel, which this channel is mostly going to have pretty much everything I make besides short films. And that's why I made EAC Films, because that's going to be filled with short films I make with my friends. It's just silly films that I make with my friends, guys. You don't have to take it so seriously, because I know you guys are going to see those and be like, he has the nerve to make fun of movies if they're bad on this channel, and then makes his own films that he thinks are amazing on this other channel 
channel. Guys, I know my short films aren't going to be amazing. You're not going to think that they're amazing. I'm not trying to be the next James Wan or anything. Don't take them too seriously, please. They're just silly videos that I make by myself, with my friends, whatever. And it's just another channel that I want to put some of my work out on, whether it's really serious, which will be really rare on that channel, or it's just, as I keep on saying, silly videos that I make with my friends that we just made for fun. And that's it. Again, don't take it too seriously. I keep on saying that, but I feel like I can't emphasize it enough to not look at the videos and be like, he has the nerve to make fun movies on this channel if they're bad, but he makes his own short films on another channel. That's partly why I made a whole nother channel because I don't want you guys to see short films on this channel back to like the emoji movie when I make fun of that movie and then you see my short film and he's like, he thinks he's the next Quentin Tarantino or Steven Spielberg or whatever. And it's like, I know I'm not, I'm just trying to make fun videos with my friends. Uh, I keep on saying that, but it's true. Guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, sorry I had to be dragged on for so long with that announcement. Go check it out if you want. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching this movie review on Dr. Sleep. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.